All right, so now let's take a look at ScreenFlow for Mac. So let me get out of my presentation here and I'll switch over to ScreenFlow. And we're gonna have two different windows. The first window is going to be the edit window, which you can see right here. And I'll kind of get to what all this down here means here in just a second. But first, I am going to show you what the recording option looks like. And the reason I have to do this is because it, I'm using ScreenFlow to record currently, so it won't let me record and try to create a new screen recording to begin with. So what I did is I took a screenshot here to kind of show you what it looks like before I began recording. So whenever you first load up ScreenFlow, this is what you will get. This little gray window right here, and it's going to ask you to record your desktop from and usually that'd be grayed out but I have two different monitors so I have this actually on my external monitor because I use my main monitor to kind of stage everything to move over to the actual recording so that's why I record from that secondary desktop and then you also see you have record video from you know built-in eyesight that's the one on my iMac and then record my audio from blue snowball which is my microphone and then record the computer audio so these are the main basic options. They're super simple. One thing that you'll notice that's different between this ScreenFlow and Camtasia is Camtasia has a box that you have to draw and you have to stay inside that box for your screen recording. ScreenFlow doesn't do that. What it does is it actually records your entire screen and then lets you crop it down later. So it gets you recording faster and then you just fix the crop later on during the editing process. Now, ScreenFlow makes this super easy so it doesn't take a lot more time. It actually takes about the same amount of time as drawing the box up front, but it's a lot more flexible. So let's take a look at what the actual ScreenFlow program looks like here. And similar to Camtasia, it's just kind of reversed. We have our view pane here, our timeline down here on the bottom, and then over here is our media and effects panel. So here's my media here. You can kind of see all the stuff here. And to add new media, you can go here. It accepts the same kind of stuff that Camtasia does. So you can import audio and pictures and graphics and, and video. Basically, whatever you can play on your Mac is what you can import into ScreenFlow. So that's how you import it in. And then once you have it in, it's just as simple as clicking and dragging and dropping there. And you can also, similar to Camtasia, you can also add a new recording. So it can do the same thing that Camtasia does and go out and create a new recording. You know, if you flub something up, you can reword something that's a little bit easier to understand. That's the best way to do that. And down here on the bottom, you'll notice that ScreenFlow does a good job of labeling what each function is. So for example, this is the video and then this is the audio. It tells you exactly what it is and then it, it screen recording also has the date. So if you made multiple, it's easy to keep them separate. And editing is as simple as, just like Camtasia, I usually use a keyboard shortcut. And to cut, T is the cut in ScreenFlow. So you can do that there and then select it and delete it. I'm going to undo all that because I've already edited this. As you can see, I don't want to delete that again. So that's a simple cutting on ScreenFlow. You can also see that ScreenFlow has the same kind of options here. So if I were to play this flub up up here at the beginning. So I'm going to hit produce and share. You can see that little red arrow fly in and then down here on the bottom, I'll play this a little bit further so you can see. And you have a couple of different options. We'll talk about a lot of these later. But you can see there, I flew out the red arrow and I called this up. They call it a call out. Uh, and Camtasia does the same thing where it focuses your attention. So it blurs and darkens the background and then it brings the focus, whatever you want the focus to be, up to the forefront. So that is a call out feature. It's, it's nice for like screen recording, like here I'm showing Camtasia, the export settings. So that's makes it easier to see on the screen. As far as screen flow goes, you have video properties, so you can actually change you know, the scale of the video. You can zoom it in or out. You can crop it. You can add a cool little reflection, shadow. You can also color correct, so you have color controls down here on the bottom. So you can increase your saturation if you want to make something black and white. You can do that here as well. 
And you also have video filters. So you can add, you know, a, a fancy little video filter, like a blur or, you know, a distortion, maybe a color adjustment, color effect, all that kind of stuff. Again, that's a little bit more advanced. This is kind of where, you know, it crosses a line between a high scale video editing tool and, you know, creating simple quick videos for, you know, what we're doing here. So again, I'm going to recommend that you shy away from most of that kind of stuff. And then here you also have your audio settings. So you'll notice that a lot of this looks a lot like Camtasia. So you can adjust your, your volume here. You can also see you can do ducking here. And what that does is it makes transition sounds easy. So if you have, you know, a voiceover and what we call a bed, a music bed underneath it, if you turn on ducking, then it'll automatically adjust that music bed based on the voice. And so that's kind of a fancy effect. You don't really have to worry about that too much. You can also smooth your volume levels so you can kind of normalize it, bring the quiet parts higher and bring the loud parts lower. And you can also mix your input to mono. You don't really need to do that. You can also add effects to your voice. You can add a presence. You know, again, you're kind of getting into the fancy area and you kind of want to shy away from most of that. You also have screen recording properties. I do, what I usually do is I change my pointer to one of these circles or maybe a square. And what that does, you can see it makes the cursor easier to see on the screen. And then you can also have it invert. So whenever you click, it inverts it. So all it's really doing is showing visually where you're clicking the mouse. 